Good morning and welcome to the Reflections, uh, Thursday the 18th of February. I'm Vicky Higgins and thank you for joining me today. So the reading we're looking at today is from John, chapter 4, and it's verses 1 to 26, but I won't read all those out, just the ones that struck me when I was reading through, preparing for this reflection. The Pharisees heard that Jesus was gaining and baptising more disciples than John. Although, in fact, it was not Jesus who baptised, but his disciples. When the Lord learned of this, he left Judea and went back once more to Galilee. Now he had to go through Samaria, so he came to a town in Samaria called Sychar, near the plot of ground Jacob had given to his son Joseph. Jacob's well was there, and Jesus, tired as he was from the journey, sat down by the well. It was about the sixth hour. When a Samaritan woman came to draw water, Jesus said to her, Will you give me a drink? His disciples had gone to the town to buy food. The Samaritan woman said to him, You are a Jew, and I am a Samaritan woman. How can you ask me for a drink? For Jews do not associate with Samaritans. Jesus answered her, If you knew the gift of God, and who it is that asks you for a drink, you would have asked him and he would have given you living water. Jesus told her, go call your husband and come back. I have no husband, she replied. Jesus said to her, you are right when you say you have no husband. The fact is you have had five husbands and the man you now have is not your husband. What you have just said is quite true. Sir, the woman said, I can see that you are a prophet. Our fathers worshipped on this mountain, but you Jews claim that the place where we must worship is in Jerusalem. Jesus declared, Believe me, woman, a time is coming when you will worship the Father neither on this mountain nor in Jerusalem. You Samaritans worship what you do not know. We worship what we do know. For salvation is coming from the Jews. Yet a time is coming and has now come when the true worshippers will worship the Father in spirit and truth. For they are the kind of worshippers the Father seeks. God is spirit and his worshippers must worship in spirit and in truth. The woman said, I know that Messiah, called Christ, is coming. When he comes he will explain everything to us. Then Jesus declared, I who speak to you am he. This is the word of the Lord. So as I was thinking about the passage, the word revealed came spinning round and kept coming back to me. There's a theme throughout the passage. But first I wanted to say that I noticed reading this passage something that I don't, I'm not sure I've noticed before. When Jesus or when they talk, the passage is talking about the number of people who have been baptised, the passage makes the point that it's not Jesus doing the baptising, it's in fact his disciples. And it just struck me that as then, or as, as was then, as is now, the greatest commission is to bring others to Christ, to introduce them to a living relationship with Jesus. Baptism. And how then, as we as followers or disciples of Christ, have a really important role as a channel for God's love to our fellow humans. So it reminds me really this passage with that phrase, that it was the disciples baptising that made me remember and reflect on my role as a channel for God's love to our humans. It's a great responsibility. And often when we talk about evangelism, it does, well, for me, it sometimes made me shudder uh, and cringe feeling worried that I might have to walk around the town centre with a placard or handing out leaflets. And I get myself a bit tied up in knots with things about balance. You know, am I spending enough time on my family, my faith? How do I fit everything in? Am I prioritising the right things? And when it comes to evangelism, that makes me really worried. How much of my time am I specifically dedicating to telling others about my faith. But it's clear in this passage 
that Jesus is going about his daily tasks. He's hot and he's tired and he wants and needs a drink of water. As he goes to service to do this task, he meets a person. And that person ends up in a conversation about faith, about the mystery of faith. So Jesus in this passage isn't turning up with a well-prepped speech, ready to convert and change people's lives, but he's a hungry, tired man. But because he's in tune with God and resting in God's heart, this task of daily living becomes an opportunity to teach and to reveal the truth about God and about him. So what we do in our lives is partly evangelism. We bear witness in everything we do to our faith and to God. It's no good wandering around, mean spirit and preaching the good news. Actions speak louder than words. We have to be a consistent we have to be consistent. By resting in God and spending time with God, that allows good and love to filter through in everything we do. Revealing God as God is love and goodness. So as we spend time with God, as we go out into the world, our actions reveal his presence. And this something is sometimes is even more important when we reflect that we live in a world with fake news. Privilege and power get their space. People can create news, words. Words become truth. But it's actions, not words, that are most powerful. And when we listen to people and watch people who are going around the world, and when we look at our own actions, we need to hold God's love as central to everything we do. What is said and what is done in the name of Christ that does not represent love for our neighbours and for him, I would argue, is human and not driven by God. So back to our commission, evangelism. We know that we can do this, carrying out everything in our daily life. As we rest with God, we become more able to reveal God through our actions. And this other bit, the last bit, is about revealing. So revealing God in this passage. God was, Jesus was tired and thirsty. But I know, don't, don't doubt that he prayed as he spoke to the Samaritan woman. And of course, he was Jesus. So at one with God, so very much in tune. As a request for a drink spun off into a more theological discussion, that was because God enabled that conversation to turn as such. So Jesus, as close to God, knew when to talk more about revealing God's love to this woman as he carried out his daily task. So as we go about our days, fill them with compassion and love for our neighbours. By doing that, we are channeling God's love into the world and revealing him to others. And the last point about revealing is that the woman took a risk. She revealed herself to God. When he asked her to come back with her husband, she could have just skulked away. It was a bit of an embarrassing question. She didn't have a very good story to go with it, to answer it. But no, she's brave and she says the truth. She has the confidence to reveal her true self to Jesus. And Jesus accepts her just as she is. Because he's love, because he's compassion. And by her opening up honestly to Jesus, he reveals directly to her that he is the son of God. So the key messages I took from this passage are that we have got to be sharing and baptising, bringing people to Christ all the time. But this can happen as part of our daily lives, as long as we spend time resting in God, filling ourselves and renewing ourselves with his love and compassion. 
and then as we go about our daily lives, we channel this to others, revealing God to them. And if people are brave enough to reveal themselves to us, we treat them with compassion and love and an opportunity to develop a living relationship with God will follow. So to end with a prayer. Dear Lord, we thank you that you are a, have a spirit with endless compassion and endless love. And we pray that through this week we are able to be renewed and refreshed with your spirit to bring about peace and comfort. But mostly, Lord, this week, love. We pray that we experience your love for us and that then as we go about our days, we're able to channel that love to others. And the outcome will be conversations about our faith, about you. And as people are brave to enter those conversations, we pray we are connected to you and channel your love and reveal you to them, creating a living relationship.